Sanjay, marijuana often is thought of a, as, a, as a bad drug, but you uncovered just how well it often works as, as a medication. What makes it work so well? You know, it, it's made up of lots of different chemicals when you talk about marijuana, better known as cannabis. And, and a couple of these important chemicals, THC is the, is the chemical that is sort of the psychoactive chemical that gets people the high. But there's also something known as CBD, which stands for cannabidiol. Now, you may not remember all this, uh, but, but there are several different of these cannabidiol receptors throughout the body, including in the brain. Our body makes some natural sort of uh, cannabidiol-like substances, but marijuana, when it binds to these receptors, can actually have some pretty, uh, pretty important medical benefit. Everything from uh, helping address seizures in the brain to helping address pain in the body, uh, you've heard about it for emaciation, for nausea, things like that. Uh, they're looking at it for PTSD now, even as a potent anti-inflammatory to protect the brain after a head injury or stroke. So, but, but that's really the mechanism, these, these receptors and the fact that marijuana can, can really target those specific receptors. One thing we often hear is that marijuana today is a lot stronger than it was, uh, let's say, a generation or so ago. Is it more potent right now, and could that make it yeah. more addictive? I think it's safe to say that it is more potent right now. We spent some time with the uh, Marijuana Potency Project. There's a farm down in Mississippi uh, where they analyze the, the marijuana that is confiscated in, in various places. And, you know, if, if back in the 60s and 70s, uh, marijuana was closer to 1% THC, uh, the average is higher, uh, even above 10%, 10 to 13% THC now. Uh, the doctor down there said they have found t they have found marijuana with with THC concentrations as high as 37 percent. So there there has been this breeding of the plant to try and increase the THC. So I think that that's true. Whether or not that makes it more addictive is a little bit more. Uh, it's a little bit of a tougher question to answer. Certainly, if you talk to the scientists at the National Institute on Drug Abuse, which we did, they believe that a higher potency marijuana will be more addictive. But, you know, it, it's, this has been a difficult thing to prove. Uh, so theoretically, it seems so, but we haven't seen that absolutely clinically yet. One final question. A lot of people were tweeting me saying, when, in reacting to your, your report and your conversion on medical marijuana, they were saying, doesn't Sanjay know that you can get lung cancer from smoking marijuana? Can you? Well, you know, I mean, I think that there's a concern anytime you smoke anything that you can damage the lungs, cause lung disease, even lung cancer. Certainly, we see that with cigarette smoke, tobacco. It took a long time to actually prove that. We don't have actually conclusive evidence to say right now that marijuana smoking leads to lung cancer. But look, I'm, smoking is not something that I would advise as a physician. I think uh, the patients who are taking this, let me be really clear, sometimes these strains of marijuana, they're taking it as an oil. They, they, t they take the marijuana as an oil, and it's a high CBD, low THC. W what that means is they're not getting high off of it, but rather using the medicine uh, instead and then using it as an oil instead of smoking it. I mean, look, I think of this as a medicine. And so when you think of reefer madness and imagine all the visuals that you think of reefer madness, when you watch this documentary, Wolf, I think you're going to see a whole different way potentially of using med medical marijuana.